shine through the shadow, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction, till every dark addiction starts to pray. Declaring there is hope. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Addiction starts to break. Jesus, Jesus. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak
I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety and to every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus sing it gently I speak Jesus flowing from the throne flowing from the throne and through the city of God and on either side of the river there grows the tree of life and the leaves are for the healing of the nations you did not die for nothing you did not spend your, send your spirit for nothing, that, but that we would be filled with life, that we would be your kingdom, that we would be your temple. So we speak, we prophesy who you are. We prophesy who you are. Do you feel the world is broken? Do you feel the shadows deepen? But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? Do you wish that you could see it all made new? Sing that verse again. Do you feel the world is broken? You sing, we do. We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through?
the Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor? Scripture up now. We're gonna have a washing of the word. From John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 1 verse 3, through him all things were made and without him there's nothing that has been made that was made. In him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness has not overcome it. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subject to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in the hope that creation itself would be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. And we know that the whole of creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up till this present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, we groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship and the redemption of our bodies. And I wept and I wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or to look inside. But then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. And then I saw the Lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. And the Lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all of the earth. And he went, and he took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you were slain. And with your blood you have purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God. And they will reign on the earth. They will reign on the earth. Sing some more. The Father truly love us. Does the Spirit move among us? And does Jesus our Messiah hold forever those He loves? Does our God intend to dwell again with us? that again. Does the Father truly love us? Does the Father truly love us? Does the Spirit move among us? Does Jesus our Messiah hold forever those he The lion. 
Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. From every people and tribe, from every nation and tongue, He has made us a kingdom and priest to God to reign with His Son. Is He worthy, is He worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is He worthy, is He worthy, is He worthy of this? Lift it up now. nothing back from you. We bring our tithes and our offerings to say that you are worthy, that you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power and praise forever and ever. Won't you bring your tithes and your offerings as we worship once more? Does the Father truly love us? Does the Spirit move among us? Does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those He loves? Does our God intend to dwell again with us? He does. Sing, is anyone worthy? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seals and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave from every people and Tongue. He has made us a kingdom and priest to God to reign with. 
are worthy, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your presence and that we can worship you together this morning. We want to pray for some special people who are on outreach. Can you cue that video for us? Sheldon asked me to play this for you. Start coming across. Do the pull down button, the arrow button down. <laughs> hey, Wellspring Ministries. Thank you so much for covering us in prayer. As you can see, it's really tough out here on the mission field. And we'd really like you to continue praying for us. Love you guys and we all miss you. Cheers. <laughs> we have that one more time. We missed the first little bit. We, just because it's fun. Hmm. All the familiar faces. Okay, thanks. Hey, Wellspring Ministries. So, it's very joking, but the truth is that we are in spiritual warfare. We're always in spiritual warfare. We're always in battle. And we know that the enemy is like a lion, seeking whom he may devour and so we want to pray. Why don't you stand with me? And we just want to pray for those guys, for Sheldon, Kristen, pastors of this church, and also just for Ethan and all the guys who are with them and that whole outreach team, the Brazilian team. We just want to pray over them. So Holy Spirit, all jokes aside, we know that when we go into fight that there will be a response from the enemy. But your word says... That when the enemy comes in, then you come in like a flood. You come in like a flood. You come in like a flood. Sometimes we've learned that scripture from uh, the New King James or the King James Version, which says some, uh, when the enemy comes in like a fl flood, he raises up a banner against him. But if you read any other translation and you look at the original language, it doesn't say that. It says when the enemy comes in, then like a flood, the Lord comes against him. It's the Lord who comes in like a flood. And so we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would flood every aspect of that mission. That you would flood also Sheldon and Kristen's hearts, Ethan's heart, all the people who are there, that they would be so full of your Spirit, that would see your glory. We pray for miraculous healings. We pray even for Sheldon's own body Amen. with the brokenness that he carries on him that you would take it off in Jesus' name that as he goes to, to serve you Lord Jesus that you would take it off of him in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. So today is Mother's Day. Don't worry, we haven't forgotten at the end of the, the day I think some kids are going to come and Say Happy Mother's Day to you. If your kids forgot this morning, then I'm sorry. Uh, there's not really anything I can do about that. Why don't you stand and we're going to carry on worshipping together. Oh, Father, rescue us. Heal your sons and daughters. Yes, we confess our brokenness. Ah, but we cry out for a new day. Yes, we cry out for a new day. Our 
hearts are open to you and give us beauty for our ashes as we cry out for a new day yes we cry out for a new day yeah oh see sing a lelan oh see sing a lelan oh yeah Remember that image from the scripture where it says that each one held a bowl and a harp, and as they worshipped him with a harp, they had in their hands the bowl, and the bowl is the prayers of the children of God. And so we're heading into election time, Lord God, and we know there's so much noise. There's so much fear, there's so much doubt, there's so much there's even fighting and anger and division. We pray, Lord Jesus, that as your church, we pray that you would bless this nation, that you would bless your children. That you would have mercy on us, Lord Jesus. That you would heal us as a nation. As we cry out for a new day, Lord Jesus, that you would heal this nation. We pray for a fresh outpouring of your spirit all over your church, all over this country. That the church would be different from the world in the way we look at the elections. That the church would be different from the world in the way we talk about the elections. Oh, Father, rescue us. Come heal your sons and daughters. Yes, we confess our brokenness. Ah, but we cry out for a new day. Yes, we cry out for a new day. Just as children, we come and we sing. Sigue lela così Sigue lela così Sigue lela Sigue lela baba Sigue lela Sigue lela which one of you, even though you are evil, if your child would come to you and ask you for a fish, you'd give him a snake. Your father is much better a father than you are a father. Will he surely not give you what you cry out for in your heart? If you come to him as his child, if you come as a son and a daughter, will he not give you as a good father what you ask for? Sigue lela, sigue lela, sigue lela, sigue lela, baba, sigue lela. You are Prince of Peace. Oh, Father, call on us. 
sorry, let's start again. We want to sing for the Holy Spirit to fall on this nation and to fill it with peace and not violence. Peace and not division. Oh, Spirit, fall on us. Our hearts are open to you. And give us beauty for our ashes as we cry out for a new day. Yes, we cry out for a new day. Of course. Of course. together to pray, even if it's only two or three who are gathered, that you are there with us. What is man that thou art mindful of him? The son of man that thou hast visited him. What is man that thou art mindful of him? The son of man that thou hast visited him. Hallelujah, the king is here. Hallelujah, the king is here. No place I would rather be 
no place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. I had a little picture in my head of Jonah trying to run away. <laughs> Jonah trying to run away and in the belly of the deep. He sought the Lord and the Lord rescued him. There is no place I would rather be than in your love. No place. There is no escape, Lord Jesus. We are here where you have called us. We are here where you have set us according to your kingdom will. And there is no place I would rather be. Because I know that I live and breathe, that I dwell in your love, in your Holy Spirit's presence. Sing it again. There's no place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love. Here in your love. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love. That I can't control I want more of you, God I want more of you, God Set a fire down in my soul That I can't contain That I can't control I want more of you, God I want more of you No place I would rather be No place I would rather be I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love, here in your love. Here in your love, hallelujah, the King is here, hallelujah, the King is here. this morning Holy Spirit thank you Lord Jesus that you are here by the Spirit that you are with us so we bless your name this morning as we go into your word we thank you thank you for your spirit that guides us in Jesus name Amen so I don't want you to take it as false advertisement because it was supposed to be Uncle Charlie, Barry, uh, here this morning, but we were busy with practice. Uh, yeah. And Uncle Charlie called me and told me he can't come. His stomach is a problem. So, uh, so I told him I would, I would preach. <laughs> uh, so we, we uh, I got to say, this is right out of my comfort zone. Those of you guys who know the way I, I teach, I like to have a long PowerPoint and everything organized. And but the Holy Spirit knows. So, we are starting with Acts. So, uh, what I'd like you to do, can we pull up, just, let's, let's use, use uh, before we do that video, can you go back into um, the free worship and bring up for me the scripture Acts chapter 1 and we'll read it together as we go along if you have it on your Bible Acts chapter 1 very good idea I just want to ask was it last Sunday or the Sunday before I think it was yeah I can't remember last Sunday or the Sunday before Sheldon was saying how 
Um, you need to get yourself this uh, Holy Bible, the app, so that you can uh, use it for reading plans. And I've got to say, I, I, I have a master's in theology, but I have learned brand new things this year by starting to read the Bible again from the start. I'm on day 124 of 365. The one I use is called The Full Story, which I highly recommend, and it's got a whole bunch of uh, videos and stuff to help you get context for the, uh, every time you go into a new sort of section. So I highly recommend that. That's just a sub thing. Starting with Acts 1, let's have a look. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote all that Jesus began to do and teach. Which is this former book? Do you know? It's Luke. Luke and Acts is actually one thing. Hey? Luke Acts is one thing. It's Luke wrote Luke and Acts together. He wrote it as a single volume. Uh, or he wrote it to be read together. Not as a single volume, but to be read together. And the reason he wrote it was he was writing to this guy, Theophilus, who was obviously a very influential dude. And he wanted Theophilus to know the truth about Jesus. Because there was lots of negative rumor about Jesus then, just like there is today. Until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men, the disciples, and he gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, and he spoke to them about the kingdom of God. He spoke to them about what? About the kingdom of God. And on one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. And this is the only command over 40 days of commands and teachings that gets highlighted. So it matters. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift that my Father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Okay, we're going to stop there. A couple of days ago, it was Ascension Day. Hey? Yay! When I was small, I remember when we used to do Ascension Day celebrations, it was always like balloons. You remember that? They take balloons terribly bad for the environment and everything, so we don't do that anymore. <laughs> we do bubbles. We do bubbles sometimes because uh, those will disappear into the atmosphere. Some person is going to come to me afterwards and tell me what bubbles are doing to the, the world. <laughs> We're trying. But we get all the kids together and we put them on, you know, at school. We haven't done, we didn't do it this week because we had sport things in the way. And then we celebrated it on Friday with a big assembly. But uh, what we usually do is in the morning we have bubbles and we get the kids all together and we talk about Jesus ascending into heaven and we blow bubbles and then blow the bubbles into the air and we watch them float away. And then you have to explain that the metaphor is not complete because if they pop, Jesus didn't die, it's okay. Little grade ones crying, yeah, my bubble, my bubble didn't make it. <laughs> but the focus is always on ascending, on ascending. But the truth of it is this. The entire purpose of the ascension of Jesus is the descending of the Holy Spirit. Nothing, nothing else about that experience matters. That's why Jesus said to them, if I don't go, the Holy Spirit can't come. Yeah? Imagine if Jesus hadn't gone. Imagine he was right now in Jerusalem, a physical ruler in a physical space. There in Jerusalem. And if I wanted to talk to him, I had to get into an airplane and fly. And we would work out some system of pilgrimages, hey? Like the Muslims have to do when they go off to, to Mecca. 
we would have to come up with some sort of a system because we can't afford to do that you know, all the time. Flights are expensive. The other day, Jason was sitting in Loxo, pressing refresh because Saf Air was selling those 10 rand. <laughs> Come on now, let me in. Because flights are so expensive. So we would have to go, we'd make a plan. I don't know, I think, you know, if we take, if we take a cue from the Muslims, you know, depending on how much money you go, that's how ob obligated you're expected to go. But at least once in your life supposed to go and see Jesus, hey? That's what we would do. So at some point you need to go see Jesus. So then we would get in the thing and we'd go see Jesus, we'd stand in line. Long line. Okay. Have you ever been to Disney World? Or, some, or Six Flags? Or even like you know, Gold Reef City or something like that. You stand in those lines during the holidays. Oh my goodness. Unless you have my brother with you. Remember when Simon was, was 13 or so? That's my reminder to pray for Sheldon and then we already did that. Um, when Simon was 13 or so, he, he, he had a Give Kids the World Village uh, pass. Eh? So when we went to Disneyland when he was 13 and I was 11, we had this little thingy and we walked to the front of every line. It was like my brother in front. I'm like, look, my brother's sick. He's got cancer. He's going to die. We're going first. We just walked right past everybody. My mother just apologizing. I'm sorry. Me, I'm like, yeah! Thank you for not dying, Simon. But there wouldn't be any of those passes. You would just stand in line because Jesus got no favorites, unfortunately. So you would, well, maybe that's fortunate. You would have to just wait in line. And then you would wait hours and hours and hours in line and eventually you would get to speak to Jesus. And I don't know if you ever have this experience when you pray or when you talk to somebody, but you're probably going to forget what you were supposed to say. You would forget what you meant to say because you'd be overwhelmed by the moment, hey? You'd be like, Jesus, wow. And then you'd be talking to Jesus, and then some person in a robe would come in and be like, your time is up. And then you would have to leave. And, that, and as you walk out the door, you'll be like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> no, out you go, next time. And you forgot what you really wanted to say. We do not appreciate what the Holy Spirit has done for us in terms of intimacy with God. So Jesus says, if he does not, if I do not go, then the Holy Spirit will not come down. But it's not as simple as just that. Because I don't want us to get this confusion that the Holy Spirit exists so that we can ask Him about our personal problems. He cares, but that's not what it's for. Do you remember what I asked you to repeat? What's the part of the scripture I asked you to repeat? Hey, Barbara. Wolf Macy. <laughs> that's right kingdom of God. He talked to them about the kingdom of God. Can we cue that video? Let's have a, let's have a listen to this video quickly. It helps to explain. The Bible introduces humanity as God's royal priests, ruling with God in Eden, a place full of life and abundance and God's blessing. But humanity was deceived by evil and then exiled from Eden. And so humans forfeited their calling as the royal priesthood. But God promised that one of their descendants would be an even better priest who will defeat evil and intervene on their behalf to restore the blessings of Eden. This descendant would be a royal priest like Melchizedek that Abraham met in Jerusalem and also like Moses and the priestly figure he saw on Mount Sinai. This descendant will also be like David and the priest king that David called my Lord in Psalm 110. And all of these figures lead us to Jesus, the ultimate royal priest who suffered and died for a failed humanity so that they could be restored to their original calling as royal priests. About a month after the resurrection of Jesus, 
His disciples see him ascend into the skies. Yeah, this was the fulfillment of Israel's hopes and of the story of Jesus. He was exalted into the heavenly temple of God's presence and installed there as the cosmic royal priest. Now, Jesus also told his followers to wait for God's presence to come and guide them into the future. And so during Pentecost, a festival in Jerusalem, God's spirit comes down on them like they're each mini temples who are filled with God's presence. Mini temples? Yeah, just like God took up residence in the tabernacle and later the temple, now God dwells among the followers of Jesus and their bodies are the temple. The apostle Peter, who was there that day, later put it this way. You all are living stones built up as a spiritual house. You all are a royal priesthood. So they are all together God's temple. And they're also the priests, reclaiming that lost calling that God gave humanity to represent him and to rule the world on his behalf. The spirit is restoring the life and blessing of Eden to the people of Jesus. But these people aren't priests. They're merchants and fishermen, soldiers and slaves, tax collectors and the poor. They work in the world, not in temples. And yet they talked and behaved as if they were priests. They believed Jesus was the cosmic royal priest ruling all of heaven and earth as his temple. And they saw themselves as an extension of Jesus here on earth. That is the body of the Messiah. That's a beautiful image, but what does it actually look like? Well, if you went to the temple in Jerusalem, you would hear the priestly choirs singing poetry that honored God and that told the story of his love. Music was a bridge between heaven and earth. Also, the followers of Jesus started writing and singing new songs about Jesus as part of their priestly calling. Right. Priests also surrendered everything over to God through their sacrifices. And so followers of Jesus started giving themselves their time and their money and energy to serve those in need. And they said, these are the sacrifices that bring pleasure to God. Priests also intercede on behalf of others through blessings and prayers, advocating for the needs of everyone. Yeah, this is why the Apostle Paul called on the Christians living in Rome to all together offer their bodies as one single living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Yeah, Jesus offered his life in the ultimate act of love. And so they too were to surrender themselves to each other and to those who needed their help. This is the royal priesthood, Jesus style. When people imitate Jesus, the royal priest, they become a new humanity, living in a way that reunites heaven and earth. Exactly. And now you can see how the whole Bible is one unified story about a royal priestly humanity that lost its way. But then how God promised to raise up a priest who would give his life to restore us. And then how the stories of Abraham and Moses and David all point forward to a promised priest king. And how this all led to Jesus, our great high priest, who suffered on our behalf to restore us to our calling. And so this is why on the final pages of the Bible, there's a vision of a renewed and reunited heaven and earth with humans serving and ruling as God's royal priests forever. So, the kingdom of God is an expression of the heart of God through the people of God, hey? So what's the heart of God? What does Jesus care about most? Can we have the scriptures up again? Give me Isaiah 61, please. Isaiah 61. When Jesus gets up the first time in the temple on the, the beginning of his earthly ministry, He chooses a particular scripture to basically introduce himself. It's from Isaiah 61. He could have chosen any scripture. I mean, the scripture is full of prophecy about Jesus. There's plenty in Jeremiah. There's a bunch in Isaiah. There's so many scriptures that Jesus could have chosen. But Jesus chooses this. He says, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. To the what? The poor. I'm a whim. The little ones. Not, not just physically poor. Everybody who's poor. 
Yeah? Those who are squished by life. A lot of the time those are physically also poor, so I don't want to take that away. He was sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for captives and release from darkness for prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. To do what? To provide for them. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. We, we, oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor so that He will get glorified by us. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the long places long devastated and renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Now Jesus doesn't actually go that far. Yeah, he stops at... Can we go back one? Go back. Uh, go back. A few scriptures back. That he, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus actually doesn't go on to say the day of the vengeance of our God, which is an interesting thought, just for fun. Jesus stops right there on the day of the Lord's favor to proclaim the favor of God, the favor of God. Why? All of this stuff is because the Holy Spirit is on us. The Holy Spirit is on us, and it's the same true for us now. If the reason the Holy Spirit was on Jesus was so that he could do those things, then the reason the Holy Spirit is on us is because we must do these things. So why? Because if you go back a couple more chapters in Isaiah to Isaiah 59, can we have that, Isaiah 59? We get a picture of the world that grieves the heart of God. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear you. For your hands are stained with blood and your fingers with guilt and your lips with spoken lies and your tongue mutters wicked things. No one calls for justice. No one pleads his case with integrity. They rely on empty arguments. They speak lies. They conceive trouble. They give birth to evil. They hatch the eggs of vipers and spin a spider's web. Whoever eats their eggs will die. And when one is broken, an adder is hatched. Carry on. Their cobwebs are useless for clothing and they cannot cover themselves with what they make. Their deeds are evil. The acts of violence are in their hands. Their feet rush to sin. They are swift to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are evil. Ruin and destruction mark their ways. The way of peace they don't know. And there is no justice in their path. They have turned them into crooked roads and no one who walks in them will know peace. And so justice is far from us and righteousness does not reach us. We look for the light, but everything is darkness. We look for brightness, but we walk in deep shadows. Like the blind, we grope along the wall, feeling our way like men with no eyes. Even in the midday, we stumble as if we were in twilight. Among the strong, we are like the dead. We all growl like bears and moan mournfully like doves. We look for justice, but we find none. We look for deliverance, but it's far away. It's pretty heavy. Pretty heavy stuff, hey? Because this is this is a picture of the world. If we go down to verse 15, everyone tells lies. Those who turn from crime end up ruined. When the Lord noticed that justice had disappeared, I'm going to read from the NCV so you can hear it in another translation. When the Lord noticed that justice had disappeared, he became very displeased, and it disgusted him even more to learn no one would do anything about it. He saw that there was no one. The Lord looked and he was displeased there was no justice. He saw that there was no one, and he was appalled that there was no one to intervene. 
No one was doing anything about it. Do you remember in Genesis, why does God wipe out the world with a flood? Is it because he's angry or because he's sad? The scripture says it's because he's sad. He says that he was grieved in his heart. Why? Because those are the things he cares about. The people there are the people he cares about. And it destroys him that there is so much injustice. And so the Spirit of the Lord is upon us to make a new humanity, to make a new kingdom, to be part of this kingdom that goes out and expands justice, that there would be healing for the broken, that there would be freedom for captives. Because the systems of this world do not lead to justice. And so we ask, as we head towards Pentecost, that our heads would be right, Lord Jesus, about what it is we're actually asking for when we ask for your Spirit to fall on us as a nation. When we ask for you to fill us with your Spirit, it is not so we can do party tricks. It is so that there will be justice. Make us a new people. Make us royal priests. Make us your temple. That's our prayer this morning. Make us your temple. Because we need to care about the things that you care about. And the things you care about are the people. I want to spend a couple of minutes praying again. Uh, why don't you just grab a partner? We're going to pray about the elections now. We're going to spend some more time praying. Just grab yourself a partner, anybody you feel comfortable with. Anybody you feel comfortable with. We have already prayed that there would be peace. We've already prayed that there would not be violence. What we want to no pray about now is what we would be during this time. That the church needs to be the temple of God, that the church needs to be this new salvation, this new. So that means that when we speak, we speak differently to the world. We do not speak about these elections, about our country, about your purposes, the way the world speaks. We speak according to the leading of your Spirit. Teach us to prophesy. Holy Spirit, teach us to prophesy truth and righteousness. More than that, teach us to be healing. Teach us to be salvation for people who are lost, people who are broken, people who are in need. Spend some time just praying over the other person that they would be the temple of the Lord, that they would be high priests, that they would introduce a new kingdom. Let's just spend a few minutes praying over each other.
prepare our hearts, Lord Jesus, prepare our lips. Because we know that the, the weapons that we fight with are not carnal, but they are spiritual, but they are mighty. That you turn things over, that you turn things around because of the Spirit of the Lord on our lips. That your word in our mouth is sharper than a two-edged sword. Teach us to prophesy, Lord Jesus. Teach us to prophesy with our lives, that our lives would speak. The last verses of Isaiah 59, right after the Lord has said how frustrated he is that there is no justice, the last verses he says is this. The Lord has promised to rescue the city of Zion. That's where the people of God live. And Jacob's descendants who turn from sin. And the Lord says this, My people, I promise to give you my spirit and my message. These will be my gift to you and your families forever. I, the Lord, have spoken. Again, the Lord promises through the prophet Isaiah hundreds of years before Jesus was born. The Lord says, my people, I promise to give you my spirit and my message. These will be my gifts to you and your families forever. I, the Lord, have spoken. And so we thank you for your spirit on our lips, Lord Jesus. And we make a choice. We make a choice that we will not speak as the world speaks. Not about people we support and not about people we don't support. That we would not speak according to what the media says, but according to what your spirit says. More than that, Lord Jesus, that we would act, that by your spirit there would be healing around us. There would be freedom around us. That we would be your temple and that we would be your priests. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. So I want to encourage you to prophesy. The way the, the, the Apostle Paul, he said that you should seek the spiritual gifts especially prophecy. That's what he said. Not especially tongues. Nothing wrong with tongues, but he didn't choose that. Not especially healing, even though, you know, in terms of wow power, if I go poof and he gets healed, everyone notices. But that's not what the Holy Spirit says through Paul we should seek most. We should seek prophecy so that we would speak what the Spirit is saying. Because the church has to be different. We cannot be like the world. And so we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would do that through us in Jesus' name. Where's the mothers? If you are a mother today, won't you stand, please? I want you, who is not a mother, To lay hands on and prophesy. If you feel, just pray for them. When I say prophesy, I'm not talking about telling their future. I'm talking about saying what the Lord says. So if you can just surround, we'll just surround all the mothers. There are mothers standing with nobody around them. Get up off your butt and go. <laughs> Let's prophesy while the kids are coming in.
Çorun. Hem sence bak. So they have a little something prepared for the mothers today. We just want to um, just say thank you to all the mothers that are here today. Um, thank you for the input. We know that you just do your very best for each and every child over here today. And we just want to say thank you. I am reading from Proverbs 31, from verse 25. And it's about a, a noble woman. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her husband also, sorry, her children arise and call her blessed. Her Ooh. husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Are you ready, guys? Can we say this loud, hey? All right, are you ready? Honor her. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. Amen. We praise you ladies in our hearts and we love you very much. Glory to you guys as well. Thank you very much. They Amen. each have a chocolate for all the mothers here today, um, which they will be dishing out. Go, 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 dish them out. Quickly, 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 go, go, go. Every, to every mom. Do we have anybody... Do we have anybody uh, who's visiting us for the first time here this morning? <laughs> Any guys? Welcome. I should have welcomed you earlier, but I want to welcome you now as well because please don't just go away, okay? We want to spend some time with you. We're going to have tea and coffee. Don't, don't just go away, okay? <laughs> guys, thank you very much for this morning. I pray that you will go and spoil your, mo your mothers and your uh, wives. Uh, a lot today but don't run off let's have some tea and coffee together this is sometimes when some of the most powerful prayer happens so once you share your needs over some tea and coffee and we'll pray with you amen thank you guys